Hey guys, today we are going to look at non-proportional relationships in tables. We're going to answer the question, how are non-proportional linear relationships represented in tables? So in linear relationships with tables, we're going to have two main values that we're looking at. The first one is rate of change. Non-proportional linear tables do not have a constant ratio of y over x. So you're not just multiplying or dividing y over x to find that constant ratio. Instead, they have a constant rate of change, or you'll also hear it called sloped, which is the change in y over the change in x. And we are going to use the letter m to represent that. So rate of change is our m value. And to find it, you do change in y over change in x. We'll look at that in a minute. And then the next value that you look for in a linear table is an initial value. So if you have a proportional table, it's gonna go through the point zero, zero, but with non-proportional linear tables, they do not go through the point zero, zero. Instead, there is some point where the X value is zero and the Y value is not zero, and that is the initial value, or it'll also be called the Y intercept, and we represent that with the letter B. So when we're going through these tables, we're going to look for those two things. We are going to look for M, the rate of change, and B, the y-intercept or initial value, so that we can write an equation. The equation for a non-proportional linear table can be written in the form y equals mx plus b, where M is that rate of change, change in y over change in x, and b is the initial value, which is the y value when x is zero. So let's try to identify those three things for this first table. So remember the rate of change is the change in y over the change in x. So I am trying to figure out how much are my y's changing by and how much are my x's changing by, and that will help me figure out the rate of change. So the way you do this is you ask yourself, how did I get from four to seven? Well, I added three. And then how did we get from zero to one in the X's? Well, we added one. So our rate of change is the change in Y over the change in X. My change in my Y values was three. And my change in my X values was one. And three divided by one is three. So my rate of change or my M value is three. Okay, the initial value is a little bit easier to figure out. This is just where your X value is zero. Which you usually just have to look for that in the table, which in this case, when my X value is zero, my Y value is four. So that is my initial value which is the letter B. I like to say it's the letter B for beginning point. So now that I have my uh, rate of change, which is the M, and my initial value, which is B, I can write the equation in Y equals MX plus B form. My rate of change or M value was three. So I'll replace M with three. And then my initial value or B value was four, so I'll replace B with four. So my equation is Y equals three X plus four. All right, let's look at another table. So first I'm gonna start by finding the rate of change, which is the change in Y over the change in X. And you can use any two points in the table to find this rate of change. Um, so instead of working with this point right here, since I see a negative number, I'm gonna go ahead and work with these next two numbers. And I'm gonna ask myself, how did I get from 12 to six? Well, I subtracted six. Another thing you could do is six minus 12, you could work backwards to figure out how we got from 12 to six, and we still get negative six. So my rate of change there, or my change between the y's there is negative six. Okay, now let's look at my x values from those two points, zero to eight, how did I get from zero to eight? Well, I added eight. 
So my rate of change, the change in y's between those two points was negative 6, and then the change in my x's was 8. And now I need to simplify this fraction. 6 over 8, those are both divisible by 2. So negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So my rate of change is negative 3 fourths. And there is my rate of change or my m value. Okay, then the next thing I want to look for is my initial value. Remember, this is where x is 0. And I can see that right here in the table, 0, 12 is my initial value. So 12 is my initial value, which is b. So now I'm ready to write my equation in y equals mx plus b form. It'll be y equals my m value is negative 3 fourths. So I'm going to replace m with that. Put x. And then my initial value is 12, so we'll put plus 12. So there is my equation. Okay, next table, it's asking for the rate of change. Again, you get to choose your two points to find the rate of change from. I noticed that my first two points have negative values and the last two points are all positive. So I'm gonna go ahead and work with those last two points to find the rate of change or the change in y over the change in x. So from five to 15, to go from five to 15, I would add 10. And then to go from three to five, I would add two. So my rate of change is change in y over change in x. My change in the y values from five to 15 was positive 10. And then the change in my x values from three to five was positive two. And 10 divided by two is five. So my rate of change or my m value is five. Okay, now my initial value is where x is zero, which I do not see in this table. So I want you to think about where zero would fit in with these numbers. So if we're counting, it would be negative one, zero, and then one. So I would have zero right here, directly in between negative one and positive one. So that means the y value is gonna be directly between negative 15 and five. So you need to think about what is directly in between negative 15 and five, which would be negative 10. So there is my initial value, negative 10. Another way you could think about it, since we found the rate of change is five, that means how much I'm changing each x value. So from negative one, the next x value would be zero. And then my, I know my rate of change is five because we figured that out already. So you could do negative 15 plus five, which is 10. So there's just another way proving that our initial value is, sorry, negative 10, not positive 10. Negative 15 plus five is negative 10. So my equation here in y equals mx plus b form would be y equals five is my rate of change x and then my y-intercept or the initial value is negative 10, so then I'd put minus 10. Okay, let's look at this next one. It says, Tyler is making custom water bottles through a printing company. He spends $4.50 to make each bottle and pays a one-time setup fee of $18. Complete the table and write an equation that can be used to find y, the total amount of money Tyler will have spent after x number of water bottles. Okay, so the rate of change is going to be what I'm changing by each time, and then my initial value is going to be like a one-time fee. That's just going to be what I start out with. So to me in this word problem, it's pretty obvious that our initial value is 18 because that is the one-time setup fee. That's kind of what he's going to have to pay to start out at. And then the rate of change is going to be the 450 for each bottle because that's going to be what this scenario is changing by each time he makes a new bottle he's going to have to pay the $4.50. So that means my equation in y equals mx plus b form 
is y equals 450x plus 18. Okay, so now that I've analyzed the scenario and I know what my initial value and my rate of change are, I can fill out my table here to show how much one, two, and three bottles are gonna cost. So remember, he's gonna have to pay $18 before he even buys any bottles. Then we are going to add our rate of change, 450 per bottle. So 18 plus 450 would be 2250. So one bottle, he would be paying a total of 2250. Okay, then the second bottle, I would add 450 for another water bottle, and he would be paying a total of $27, because 2250 plus 450 is 27. Then a third bottle, I'm gonna be adding another water bottle, so I'm gonna add another 450, and 27 plus 450 is 31.50. All right, let's look at the next scenario. It says, Maria started saving money to buy a bike. Her dad gives her an initial amount. Then she saves the same additional amount each week. The table shows the total amount of money Maria has saved Y after X weeks. So here's the table. After one week of her saving and getting her dad's um, initial amount, she has $55. And then two weeks, 70, three weeks, 85. So it says, what was the initial amount of money Maria was given? Well, let's see if we can figure out how much Maria is saving each week. She goes from 55 to 70, which is plus 15, and then 70 to 85, which is another plus 15. So she is saving $15 per week. So after week one, she saved plus 15. So I basically need to figure out the initial amount by subtracting out the $15 she's already saved the first week, which would be 40. And now you can see 40 fits in that pattern. 40 plus 15 is 55. 55 plus 15 is 70. 70 plus 15 is 85. So what was the initial amount of money that Maria was given? It is $40. And then how much money did Maria save each week? Well, we already figured out she saved $15 each week. And now it wants us to write the equation. So 40 is our initial amount or our B value and 15 is our rate of change or our M value. So this equation in Y equals MX plus B form is Y equals 15X plus 40. Okay, the last one says an arcade charges $2.50 per game and a $6 entry fee. Which table shows the cost of C, the arcade entry fee, and playing G games. So the first thing I notice about all these tables is they start at one game. So if you think about one game, he's gonna pay 250 because he's playing one game, plus he's gonna have to pay the $6 entry fee. So the one game will cost the 250 per game plus the $6 entry fee, which is eight. 50. So I'm looking for a table that has the point 1850 to show that one game is going to cost $8.50. So that eliminates A and B right away because this one has one game costs 250, which is not correct. We have to add that entry fee. And this game or this table has one game costs $6, which is not correct because that's only paying for the entry fee. So C and D both have the correct first point of one game costing $8.50. Okay, now I need to figure out which of these two tables is correct based on the $2.50 per game. So if, if I notice both of them go up to three games. So I'm adding two games. So two games, if it's 250 per game, is gonna cost $5. So I need a table that is showing two games, going from one to three games, cost $5.
which you can see is C, 850 plus, thir or 850 plus 5 would give us 1350, not 11. So the correct answer here is C.